This is the story of the electric pencil who produced an extraordinary album of drawings. Five years ago, we found ourselves with a mystery on our hands, an anonymous cache of drawings acknowledged to be masterpieces of outsider art done on old ledger sheets from Lunatic Asylum No. 3 in Nevada, Missouri. They look like ancient artifacts. Who was the artist? How and when did he make these drawings? As we researched the clues in the drawings, we not only discovered the identity of the artist, but we also discovered some intriguing information about the hospital as well. We stumbled on such fascinating stuff that it inspired us to do a full-length PBS quality production for a national audience. We'd like to introduce you to our project so far and share with you some of the other stories we plan to explore in our documentary. Five years ago, Harris Diamond, who is an artist and an art dealer, discovered an incredible album of drawings. The drawings were found in 1970 in a trash heap by a 14-year-old boy. The album consists of uh, 140 two-sided drawings, 280 pictures. The drawings were done on ledger pages from State Hospital or State Lunatic Asylum number three in Nevada, Missouri. Harris took on the challenge of trying to discover the artist and the backstory behind this artwork. At the very beginning, we created a comprehensive website, a beautiful art book, and got a lot of a really wonderful press around that. We launched a big social media uh, outreach. We found that there were a lot of bloggers really fascinated by the artwork and really interested to find out who this artist was. Through a series of articles in a local Missouri paper, we actually found the family of the artist. The story that has emerged is really a, an amazing tale. We went out to Missouri. We have fascinating material from local historians, from experts in the medical uh, health fields, and very touching commentary from the family. We produced an 18-minute mini-documentary on the electric pencil, which reveals the identity of the artist, James Edward Deeds, Jr. We tell his tragic story. We present the mysteries we uncovered and the discoveries we made. We also introduce some of the compelling people and narratives we've encountered in the course of developing this project. Check out the video on our website. Edward Dietz's place in history and in time when this story took place coincides with this country's first grand experiments at actually trying to cure mental illness or dealing with it at least in a humane way. It turns out that he was committed for life at State Lunatic Asylum number three in Nevada, Missouri. In the course of Edward Deed's incarceration, there were transformations in the field of mental health care. When he went into the hospital, it was still a self-sufficient community complete with fresh air and productive labor. Later in the course of his years there, overcrowding and underfunding, warehousing and neglect overtook the progressive ideals. We were amazed to discover that the utopian beginnings of our modern mental health care system go all the way back to the 1850s. Pioneers such as Dorothea Dix promoted the humane philosophy of moral treatment that the nearly forgotten Dr. Thomas Kirkbride based his ambitious Kirkbride plan on. The philosophy embraced the idea of architecture as a curative. There were nearly a hundred of these hospitals built. What's happened to the buildings? They were built while our country was extricating itself from the hugely expensive horror of the Civil War. 
Where did the funds come from? What political and social forces got them built? These stories have fallen into obscurity, even among medical professionals. In the 1940s, electric shock therapy and psychotropic drugs became part of the normal, routine treatment of patients. According to Edward's family, he was subjected to both and suffered great loss as a result. It turns out that often all the patients were given electroconvulsive therapy, or ECT, on a regular basis. Using Edward's years at the hospital and the changes in treatment he experienced as a launching point, we plan to bring these forgotten stories back out into the open. The artwork is a treasure trove of clues. This is a book that tells his story in his own personal language. The communication is so powerful and so symbolic and it's something that we really want to explore. So this is a journey of discovery. We need to get out in the field. We need to follow the clues that Edward gave us. So we can tell the full story of James Edward Deeds Jr., the electric pencil, in its historical context. So thank you for considering our project.